I am excited for this video and I am so glad that you clicked on it because today woohoo, I get a break from my Layla Regina that had been failing throughout the summer of 2023 because her setup is too wet. Now, all the years, and I've had this orchid since 2018, but all the years prior, she has been in the perfect setup and she has grown so well that when I potted her up into this square pot, I used the diagonal to make sure that she can stay in the pot for, well, I was estimating five, six years. That would have worked out perfectly had I not had a super high humidity summer, which was fabulous, but the setup was far too wet for this Rapiculus Lelia. And you can see by the declining pseudobulbs, they went really, really fast, had me freaked out, that she didn't like it one bit. However, she's coming back with two new growths on the one end that has the least pseudobulbs. So grateful. And the other end is growing new roots. Now, because I want to take advantage of the new root growth on the one end, because that will support the orchid in future, should I lose the other end? Because while she's in a single rhizome right now, we're going to be taking off those old bulbs as best as possible. It is not guaranteed that the second piece is going to stick around with two new growths. Depending on the root system it has, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. But I'm excited to get this into a drier semi-hydro setup. So let's go. While the intro was playing, I picked out a lot of the media that is very close to the base of the orchid just to see what I'm up against. And I'm not really seeing anything promising with regards to roots. I have some here, the tweezers, they feel firm. Nope, they're papery. So we've got the good end, which is this one growing the roots. We've got the other, what I consider also a good end because it's growing two new growths, which means roots are not far away. But however, what you can see here with the Regina, let me just shift it. What you can see is how big, and it's already mature, this new growth that has got new roots growing. So the energy consumption that it's going to spend on getting these two new growths to actually mature and then grow roots, that could be a problem for this orchid. When it comes to that, yeah, she's gonna make it. You know what I mean? It's going to be a question of time. So the reason I'm taking out the media is because I want to make sure that I don't bash the root tips when I tilt the pot. Mm, if I can get as much ceramis out as possible, that would be ideal, but more importantly, it's the lava rock. So now, of course, the question is, why don't I just remove the pseudobulbs, do not disturb the orchid or the root system at all, and then just, you know, maybe shift this one back in. I want to get rid of the ceramis. While I've had such dry climate and all the years of growing Rapiculus lelias, I needed a little bit of media that could boost the humidity, hold on to more water, and the ceramis was fantastic in doing that. But I don't want to lose any Rapiculus lelias, assuming that next year I'm going to get a very dry summer again. So I don't want to be freaking out with regards to, are my Rapiculus lelias going to be okay with a ceramis in the pot? If I can get into it now, then I'll rest a little bit easier next year. I can always supplement with water, but once the media is wet, it is more difficult for me to make sure that it dries out fast enough. I got a bit of concern with the pseudobulb right here. Yes, I'm showing you all the details. As usual, timestamps are in the description, but I'm showing you all the details so that you can see where I'm coming from, where my mindset is. I've got some gorgeous roots going down there, but this pseudobulb has me concerned, and for that reason, the health of this side also has me concerned. So, I'm going to unpot the orchid very, very carefully. And while I do that, would you do all the fun stuff that YouTube likes so much? Would you please give this video a like? And also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, wow, now would be a great time. <laughs> I would appreciate it so much as well. Thank you. Now let me get this Rapiculus Lelia out of her pot. Oh, we have a root tip back here. Oh, that's great news. All righty. Let's be careful. Rapiculus Lelias hate to have their roots disturbed. So even if you have a hybrid that has a Rapiculus Lelia as a parent, take that into consideration when you repot your orchid because usually they will take on that character trait as well. When it comes to downsizing, hybridizing, bigger cattleyas, 
and bringing them to a smaller, compacter, more, let's say, favorable plant to cultivate in private. They will use Rapiculus lalius. Uh, yeah, and usually those hybrids will adopt the fussy roots attribute. So I'm just gonna take the ceramis around the edge from that. Woo, glad I saw that, because what I want to do is now strategically tilt my pot away from root tip. So I've got root tip on this side, and they're here as well. I've got some nice roots in the back here. So in order for the video to work, I'm going to be tilting the pot this way. At the same time, holding on to my orchid, wish us luck. Uh, okay, we've come this far. Eh, got bits on the root tips there. Yeah, I know I sound fussy with it, but I, I like to be over cautious than just say, oh, it'll be fine. It's a good day on the patio today and I'd like to keep it that way. So I'm just going to <laughs> unearth her. Wow, I even had some Akadama at the base. Okay. Akadama is another step towards super hydration, great wicking material. And yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it was wonderful for several years. But now, after this summer, I'm not going to play any games. So this orchid was layered, which is a great reminder because all the orchids that I potted up in this method in that year, I'm gonna have a look at my records, then I know what's in their pots without having to disturb them. But usually I can see, well, probably everybody can see that something's not right with the orchid, even if you cannot see your roots when you see something going on with your pseudobulbs, your structures, pretty much that's your tell. It's got roots, this side, it has roots. That white thing that you see there, haha, <laughs> woohoo. This is like doing an archeological dig here. And trust, if I had a crystal ball, we would be taking out the pseudobulbs now and topping up with just lava rock. But I don't have a crystal ball. So I'm going down what right now is pretty risque, but my guarantee for some kind of success is in the fact that there are new roots growing. Gotta be careful. I don't want the weight of the media now to snap a root. This root is attached to a bit of lava rock in there. Okay, we released that. We have another root going, but that one's dead. Methinks this is a better camera angle, right? <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting some big lava rock. That is great, much needed. At the beginning of the season, I bought a big bag of lava rock and I thought, oh goodness me, what am I gonna do with all this lava rock? I don't need so much, blah, blah, blah. I don't like media standing around just occupying space. Well, it appears that I'm kinda running out of lava rock. That is how humid the summer was, and I prefer then to take measures into my own hands. So I've been rescuing orchids with lava rock as opposed to bark, large lava rock especially to simulate chunky bark. And I have run out of lava rock, so this is great. I'm getting some back. And my ceramist stash is getting bigger and bigger because after recycling all of this, <laughs> I put it into tubs and suddenly I've got more ceramist and I still have a little bit in the bag left. So the outcome is pretty good. Oh, 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 oh. Another root, which is great, but it's being weighed down by media, which is not good. You can make it snap very, very easily. Let's release that. I'm trying to help you, don't snap. Okay. <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> and I had sand on the top. My early days, 
of Rupiculus lelia potting in preparation for a very dry climate. The sand was great at the surface. It simulated the crevices and cracks of the rocks that they do live on, where all the debris meets up and accumulates. So I simulated that with sand. Just in case you're wondering, what is all in this pot? Do I dare pull? Got some resistance in the back here, so we'll be a little bit cautious. This root is, yeah, I know it's gone. It's gone, she gone. Thank you for your service. Oh, there's one right back there. Don't want that to crack. Normally I don't mind if roots attach to lava rock and I wouldn't bother it, but seeing as, you know, I wanna kinda salvage as many active roots as possible, if they make it after this process is a different matter. But as I always say, unless it is an emergency, I don't touch orchids unless I see new root growth coming. And I'm always like, yeah, if I make a mistake, it's gonna be okay. I tell myself that because collateral damage, you know, it usually happens if there is a golden rule in the orchid hobby, there is collateral damage to viable roots all the time. So to get new roots growing and being able to do this, like I said, I'm excited for this orchid. I'm excited that I probably won't lose her. To see pseudobulbs decline that fast, that quickly, back to back, one after the other. Thankfully, it wasn't one of those rotting phenomenons because they weren't all soft and squishy. So I could wait, but trust, I was not waiting patiently. I was a bit anxious about the whole thing. Oh, we got a nice root that went all the way down. So that's good to take note of because when we pot her up again, we don't have to put lava rock at the base. We're going to have to be doing the Tetris again. I think that's all of them now. Here she comes. Oh, yay. Oh, goodness me, girl. You had me freaked out there for a hot four months. <laughs> Not quite, a little bit less than that. But yeah, I'm just going to get my pot cleaned up because we're going to need that. I'll be right back. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is very gently mist down the roots because it's a quite a breezy day today and this pot needs a good clean up. I'll be right back. Okay, we still have a single rhizome. Let's get rid of some of the dead pseudobulbs. I'm just gonna cut at a distance here from the lens so that I can see what I'm doing and keep things in focus. So we have a beautiful piece here. I'm not cutting any of the dead roots off. It's all part and parcel of anchoring and less fiddle with the orchid. Now, <laughs> this is where big secateurs are a little bit tough, I would say, to get into, but I can still see everything at this end. The question is, how far in do I want to go? All of them would be nice, but if they will just pop off nicely without doing any damage, we're gonna take all of them off. And if they don't, then I'm gonna leave some dead pseudobulbs on. One popped off nicely. See, there's a new growth right here. Gotta be careful with that. And every time I bend that pseudobulb, I've got resistance over here. Ooh, a root tip. Okay, con mucho cuidado. Ooh, that's very woody. That's one. <laughs> Is this one gonna come willingly or do I leave it on? Oh, it's coming. Give it a bit of a twist. Ta-da! Isn't this pretty? Oh, I'm so tempted to put it into a separate pot, but mm, me thinks they're gonna stay together. 
let's stay together and let's figure out our position in the pot before we actually get going. And we'll start another cluster that is a little bit, let's see, we've got two directions of growth now. We can put them all together, comme ça. And if anything wants to grow in the back, Repiculus lelias have a fantastic way of making it happen. They push everything that is an obstacle or they consider an obstacle out of the way. I have taped up my drainage holes. Ye good old duct tape. I'm not going to go so high with the water because despite it being a breezy day, yeah, I think we've messed around enough with this one. So back into the center she goes. I'm going to do my best to follow along with what I just said we were going to do. Align the bases, put her into the pot in the center. Can align them a little bit better maybe. And I'll see you back in an hour when the pot is full. <laughs> because yes, first I'm going to cover the viable roots that reached the reservoir in the pot prior and just cover them with lava rock. Start the protection process. And one that is dangling down, I'm gonna give it some support and put a piece of lava rock underneath. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a moment. I don't know if it was clear during the editing that you saw how low the orchid was in the pot and I was building up and down underneath this viable root right here. And as I get more support underneath her with pieces of lava rock, I'm raising her up. I don't want that root to crack. So basically do everything in reverse while keeping an eye on the other root in the back where I'm also supporting it maybe weighing it down a little bit so it doesn't sort of pop up and out because I don't want to change its environment. It was used to the reservoir so it can stay there. But just making sure that I keep everybody happy in the position they were in, but also bring the orchid up bit by bit so that she's at a right level at the surface. That piece with the two growths, oh, that's a slippery one. You can see how wobbly she is. Always a little bit of a problem when they're that wobbly, but I think this is the best that I can do. And seeing as the Repiculus Lelia shuffle has already happened, I have no business moving this pot for the coming months because I can just pour water in or let the rain fall on the orchid. I don't have to mess around with her position at all. And I'll probably fuss with this in the coming days as well, while I observe root tips, how they're progressing or not. But the good news is we've got viable roots in the pot. They will tide the orchid over, should anything here stop growing. <laughs> Spot the orchid. <laughs> there she is, the Regina. Right next to Flava Solina, at a diagonal with the Brade, and then the Hone. All the others are busy as well, it's wonderful. I look forward to an update, but now that we've seen Regina, I don't need to do her again. But I just wanted to point out to you her positioning because before she was in a diagonal, now she's pretty much like in the middle with one growth direction that is active, that is towards your left. These two new growths matured. The two new growths are right here. So I've got her in this direction. So what I'm going to do, because the direction of the light is where we are at, I want to bring those growths towards us and keep them nice and snug inside the pot because I don't want to be doing this again, famous last words, for another five, six years. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I appreciate that you stayed and watched to the end. Thank you so, so much for the support. I'm relieved to get this done, get it done on time with active root growth now on both pieces. Oh, <laughs> what have we got here? Hang on a second. Look at Lutin's Blanc. What is this orchid doing? Spikes everywhere. Still in active growth, but the spikes are popping out everywhere. And that, in my books, is four months prematurely. But we'll take it, right? I would have preferred another new growth because she normally grows two or three. One, okay, she decided to bloom. <laughs> C'est la vie con les orchidées. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.